A recent survey says that you're cutting back on your streaming services. Now, now, now. This in a report at Study Finds. Well, with $4 gas or more, depending where you live, do you think so? <laughs> in fact, according to a poll of 2,000 adults in the United States, 57% are planning to cut back some of their paid streaming subscriptions. Overall, the average person is dropping three out of five from their current arsenal. Well, as inflation continues its biggest rise in 40 years, I have a feeling people are going to be cutting a lot of things out. <laughs> that being said, most of the customers who pay for either TV or video services don't anticipate dumping their favorite services. In the survey, 75% have Netflix and Amazon Prime, 61% have satellite TV, 52% have pay-per-view services like Apple, iTunes, and 48% still have cable TV. Here's the kicker. The survey found that 7 in 10 cited changes to their financial situation is a reason to reevaluate their streaming service spending. <laughs> kind of what I was driving at there with the inflation thingy. So, do you do this? There's something you want to watch on a service and you pay for it and then you forget to cancel your membership when you're done watching. And then you get that notification that you've been billed again for next month. And then you cancel it and they don't give you your money back. They just say, oh, okay, well, that means you're done a month from now. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> I've done that. Okay, in fact, this just reminded me to cancel another one today. <laughs> well, then, you know, just like shopping online drunk, you partiers subscribe to the music streaming services and don't even remember because the party was so good. I know several people who've done that. So don't deny it. You know who you are. So what keeps people loyal to a service? 45% say affordability. 44% say a wide selection of content. And 43% say a user-friendly interface that makes it easy to find things. I have to tell you, back before 2010, everyone thought I was nuts when I said that, you know, once you can talk to your smart TV or they make it easier to use or standardize it, that business is just going to take off. And I... My thought was always, you won't even know what service you're using to watch a show. You just know the show you want to watch. Well, we're not quite there yet, but you can just search and it'll come back with results of all the streaming services that have what you're looking for. But the other thing I said is once we get there, the cost will end up being the same as about what you pay for cable or satellite. <laughs> and that's true. Okay, you can see all these services all basically jump in price and your internet costs rise. I did the math and it cost me literally about the same to cut the cord and have separate services. <laughs> Talk about getting nickeled and dimed to death. $5 here and $3 there. And get off my lawn. Okay, <laughs> all that being said, the average person expects to stream 290 or more different movies and TV shows this year totaling 437 hours of content. So there's no slouching going on, I guess. This is where the money is. At some point, I don't think it's going to pay for that old TV station to pay for that big, expensive television transmitter much longer. Oh, and, and this one is me. 59% search for a service that carries a specific series or movie. I'm a huge fan of the Steve Martin, Martin Short series, Only Murders in the Building, so I'm stuck with Hulu. And I'm also a major Star Trek fan, so I'm stuck with Paramount Plus, too. And they're cranking out a ton of Star Trek series, but their stories better get better or I'm done with them. Just my nerd opinion. <laughs> that being said, the churn of streaming providers continues, and we'll see how they survive the year. Until then, be sure to keep watching your free videos at Study Finds on YouTube. You can check out more info on this and other studies by clicking the link in the description below and head over to studyfinds.com.